The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. Welcome to this episode of Pit Life Barbecue. Gather around the pit with your hosts, Johnny Mags and Messy Mike. Let's talk barbecue. What's up, everybody? Coming to you live from the Bobby and Jack's Memphis Pub. Bobby and Jack's Memphis Barbecue Soundstage located inside the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. It's the Pit Life Barbecue Podcast where we talk everything barbecue and a lot of other topics that you would normally talk around a pit. As always, I'm joined by Messy Mike. What's going on? Oh, same old stuff, buddy. How are you? Doing fantastic. Nice, nice, nice. You almost didn't make it today. Almost didn't make it today. It's my busy season at work, yep. so the packages are getting a little bit crazy. A little heavy. Yeah, <laughs> but that's all right. We can deal with that. Nice. Ed, how you doing today? I am fantastic. Excellent. Nice. I'm ready, Excellent. To, ready to hear about some delicious stuff. You know? Yes. I've digested all my Thanksgiving turkey, and oh, I think everybody's sick of on. talking turkey. Yeah. yeah, we're done with turkey. Turkey is finished, now and we need to go back to the beef. Yeah. Talking about steak. Steak. Yep. Everyone's favorite. I think, yeah, I think every single person loves a steak, depending, you know, some people like it rare, some people like it medium rare, medium, some people like it well done, but you don't want to really associate yourself with those people. But what's your favorite steak? Not picky. <laughs> Jeez. All the above. Okay. Okay. If it's meat, if it's, it's meat, for you. Dumb in. <laughs> You have my attention. Okay. All I, right. I think you got to go for the ribeye, personally. And 100%. The ribeye. I, I, I do love me a hanger steak. Yep. Yep. You know, that's going in a different direction. But uh, if you got to save a few bucks, it oh, certainly, yeah. you know, fills the void. Definitely. Definitely. As long as you marinate it well. Exactly. Yes. You have to either marinate or tender, tenderize, um, you know, like the hanger steaks, yeah. flank steak, even tri-tips. Yeah. Well, tri-tips especially just because you got the three three muscles in one. Yep. Maybe, maybe you should talk about, yeah, what the tri-tip is because it's way more common on the West Coast. You know, all mm-hmm. sorts of places serve the tri-tip sandwiches there. Yep. And I just don't see it as much on and the Tex-Mex East Coast. tex as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to explain the tri-tip? No. <laughs> You're um, the one spitting out all the information today. I'm going to uh, let you run uh, for a nudge, while. You, you, se- you seem like you had a lot of knowledge. I know. That's why I was like, oh, you ready to rock? <laughs> well, I like steaks, but no, you were, you were on a wonderful tear to, on a, for our conversation to, earlier today with just wealth of knowledge no. just <laughs> dropping bombs all day long. So No, I just try tip You're right. Run. Try tip is, you know, three separate um, muscles. I'm just, I'm just used to it with... The smoker, not into as in cooking it as a steak. Yep. So, I mean, the, you know, it's popular, like Ed said, um, West Coast. It's becoming, more, you know, more popular. Um, East Coast, it's making its way over, you know, slowly. Um, and it's, you know, like you said, it's, it's popular with the barbecue world. Um, whether you smoke it, you know, smoke it, sear it. Um, but it's, it comes from the, you know, areas where the muscles are more worked. So they're naturally going to be tougher, and, you know, that's why you want to marinate or tenderize before you, you know, start the cooking process. Um, you know, and when you do that, you also, you know, need to do that correctly. You know, so anytime you're going to tenderize, marinate, or even just season with salt and pepper, um, you know, you want to use a abundant flavor profile. Yeah. So, you know, your steak should be at least one inch thick. Um, and then, you know, heavily salt it with, you know, a coarse salt. Um, uh, a kosher um, salt or a sea salt. Like a sea salt, yep. And then, a, you know, a, a pungent black pepper. Ooh, you know, a fresh nice. cracked black pepper or a couple of different blends of black pepper. Um, but mostly your steak just needs salt and pepper, you know, because they're going to be juicy. They're going to be fatty, um, you know, marbleization. So you're going to have flavor there. And you don't want to overpower the meat just like in barbecue. 
He just said a few of my favorite words. <laughs> Meat. <laughs> Meat. And, uh, Slave. Uh, and of course, in, fat. in the marinade, you want something acidic as well because that helps to break down the fiber. Whether you can use a lemon juice, for example, with a lamb, or you can mm-hmm. use a vinegar of some type. But mm-hmm. You definitely need the acid component. Yes. And also the um, olive oil. Right. So, you know, when you're um, preparing it for the grill oven, whatever, frying pan, um, you know, you want to, you want to, Use olive oil only. You don't want to use butter. Um, you don't want to use, you know, canola or vegetable oil. You want to use olive oil. Well, that's got great flavor that it's going to win. Correct. Yep. yep. And it's going to also help the searing and the, the crust on the steak as well. And I think in a marinade, soy is always good. Oh, soy is always good. Always good. Yep. You know, my wife soy. makes one with, actually, it's got orange marmalade and soy. Ooh. It's sort of an Asian flavor. Oh, nice. Yep. You know, we use that with flank steak and put it on the grill. Delicious. Yeah, because the soy has the soy it has the, that salt right. flavor so you, to you begin gotta, with. you got to be careful then yeah. if you're using soy not to over salt. Yep. Oh, yeah. Have you ever used that Perrin stuff? Yeah. Okay. That stuff's not bad. Not bad. Not bad. It's very salty, but it's not <laughs> bad. But yeah, I mean, you know, so when you're when you're looking for a steak, like Ed said, you know, your best to to just season a grill are going to be your, you know your fillets, um, your strips, your ribeyes, your top sirloins, um, you know, T-bones, porterhouse, whatever. But you know, those ones you can just bam, take out of the fridge, let rest for at least a half an hour. Um, and you want them to get up to like room, room temperature. temperature. Yeah. Yep, and then you want to season them. Um, you know, sprinkle with a little olive oil. Then you want to season it, and then um, you also want to let the season sit on the steak as well for probably another half an hour. You know, so by the time you're putting it from the fridge to the grill is about an hour. You know, 45 minutes to an hour, um, and then you want to make sure your steak is one. You want to make sure your steak's dry before you put anything on it. Then you know you can put your olive oil in your um, you know, and you're seasoning on, um, and then throw it on your grill, you know? Nice. We, now, we, we obviously, we're talking barbecue and smoking, and yep. we, we, we live around 225 to 275. Mm-hmm. Correct. Where do you want, temperature-wise, to be with a steak at the right? I've been listening to um, Malcolm Reed, yep. and he was saying right... 500 and above. Oh, yeah. A couple other guys, 550, 650. Oh, some are 800. Some are even 700 degrees. Oh, yeah. Generally, what I do, though, is yeah, first sear it on a really hot part of the grill, mm-hmm. and then I'll move it. Correct. And even, you know, get the cover down at that point, make sure it doesn't flare up on you. Yep. you know, But then it, it's really just cooking through rather than adding to that sear. Oh, yeah. And that that's... I mean, that's perfect. That's what, you know, yeah. that's what you want. Um, I mean, the cool kids today are doing, like, you know, the reverse sear method. So yeah. It's basically what he does, but reverse the process. So, right. so you know. So get it, get it to the almost the temperature you want it yep. to be and then sear it. Yep. For, like, a minute each side. You know, so if you're going to use a smoker, um, you can use an oven, but if you're going to use a smoker, um, you know, set your smoker at 275, cook it until, you know, I mean, I like medium rare, so I'd probably, you know, smoke it until the internal temp gets to, like, 120, because um, I don't want to rest. You know, it's it's going to carry it's gonna over keep, a little over, bit. Probably even 115, yeah. too. And then, um, you know, let it rest before throwing it right on the hot grill. And, you know, again, I'd, I'd get the grill up to, like, you know, as hot as you possibly can get it using, you know, I would use lump charcoal if I was going to, you know, go that process. Um, and, obviously, grill grates. Because those are what give you the beautiful marks. The marks. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, minute each side, and then take it off and let it rest and eat now, it. It may be sacrilege, but once I've moved in for the winter, a cast iron pan can make a fantastic. Oh, steak. absolutely. Hundred percent. Absolutely. And, you know, because yeah, I'll get a good hard sear on that, and then throw some, take it off the heat. Yep. Put some butter fresh herbs Mm -hmm. and then it goes into the oven to finish cooking you know and then you can really monitor the temperature well exactly make sure you've got the temp you want yeah then you're staying staying warm (laughs) (laughs) dry (laughs) yep Oh, yeah, but that Gordon Ramsay does that yeah you know you can make a a fine steak yep then there then there was a way I think they refer to it as 
Oh, how is it? Yeah, Pittsburgh style? Oh, yes. Okay. I, I, I would get Pittsburgh style, or I used to. Would have loved to get it, or black and blue, Yeah, they also call it. Um, but a lot of restaurants don't do that nowadays. Yeah, because you know? it, it's for the internal temperature. Well, That's correct. Yeah, but I, my theory is on a steak it doesn't matter because the s- exposed surface is it's the outside. Cooked, yep. And so you're really getting a sear on that. Yeah. So it, it should be fine. Mm. Yeah, the Pittsburgh style, it was, if I remember the crust. story right, it's real thick on the crust yep. because the iron workers, that's what they would bring for lunch, which is the, the steaks because they were there all day long, crazy hours. Yep. And they would literally take a frozen steak and they'd leave it out in their lunchbox so it thaws out a little bit. Then lunchtime, they would literally throw it on the metal outside of where they're uh, melting the steel. Okay. And it would sear it right there. But that was the first time. So that's why you get the Pittsburgh style. Because it came from the ironworks and the steel mills out in Pittsburgh. Okay. But it was that because the, the temperature to melt the steel is so high that the outside metal was perfect for searing the steak. Okay. I'll go with that. Well, that's a story I've heard for years from uh, a couple different uh, things I listened to. Okay. It was, I heard it, it originally from, there's another pod, cigar podcast I listened to, Cigar Dave, mm-hmm. out of Tampa, Florida. And he always brings that up, the Pittsburgh style. And now whether that's true, I don't know, but hell with it. I'm going with it anyway. Sounds good. Sounds good. Maybe John Ivory, uh, you know, being a Pittsburgh fan, can can look that up and confirm that. Well, we're going to have a little something, I think, coming up. Because uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Patriots are coming up. The Steelers. Are coming up on the schedule within the next couple of weeks. Yep. No. So we're going to have a little conversation there, have some now, fun. See, for doneness, I don't cook <laughs> enough steak to be able, you know, one of these touching guys. Oh, the dumb method. And, and I mean, if you do it for a living, mm-hmm. they know. But for me, I still have my Therma pen handy. And 100%. That's so great because it's so narrow at the tip. You can right. get to where you know the center of it is and get the real temperature of it. Now, do you go from the side or do you go from the top? You know, I'll do both. Okay. Um, because from the top, it's much harder to judge, right? Exactly. Am I, side, am I too far in? Am I right. not enough? Yeah. Right. Because, you know, if you, you learn after a while doing that, okay, well, I was really down the bottom where it was hotter, and I missed the middle of it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I love I always go in from the yeah, side. That makes more sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you're cooking, just a catering tip, if you're cooking steaks for a crowd, you know, so if you have a party and you want steaks, don't, you know, try and stay away from individual steaks. You know, getting everybody their own steak or whatever. You know, cook a rib, you know, a rib roast, cook a prime rib. Um, you know, something that is bulk because it'll cook more evenly. It'll cook, um, you know, as you cut it, you'll get the different different internal temperatures for all your different guests. So you're mm-hmm. not cooking steaks at all these different temperatures yeah. as you cut, you know, a bigger style meat. Yep. You'll you'll satisfy. You you're know, gonna get your people. medium rare in the middle, and you're gonna work out towards Correct. the. Yep. And unspeakable. The aforementioned tri-tip is good for that. You can cook, you know, a whole tri-tip and thinly slice yep. it because you want to slice that thin anyway. Mm-hmm. And you're slicing it three separate ways, is also uh, right because <laughs> you've got, <laughs> got to be aware that the grain is changing direction. Yep. Right now. Yep. Nice. Yep. So what else? What else? Yeah. It is, the steak is actually coming, competition-wise, mm-hmm. is really starting to come to the forefront. It Big is time. becoming real popular. The SCA, or the um, Steak Cook-Off Association, mm-hmm. is... They're actually affiliated with the National Barbecue Association, the MBBQA now. So now they're, they developed a partnership. Oh, did they? So when you go down to the conventions, um, you know, you have the, um, they joke about it, you know, you have the... Hot and fast, and the low and slow, and you know at the end of the competition or um, the close to the end of the convention, they have a steak cook-off. So you know I, I do it every year, um, and Malcolm, you know Reed, and all those guys do it. Um, 
Malcolm Reed, he actually just took second place in the uh, the World, yep, food, the world championships food Championships yep. on the stake division. He, For the life of me, I can't find out the actual winner mm-hmm. of who won, but I know because I listened to his show. Yep. So and I he know, just bought his products as well. You can hush on that. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. You can be quiet. <laughs> sorry. You can be quiet. You're going to get me in trouble. <laughs> she doesn't know I bought them yet. Uh, okay. Well, she Gotcha. You did not buy them yet. Friggin does now. So <laughs> Sorry. What the hell's the difference? <laughs> oh, um, that's why the photo was taken at 2 a.m. in the two morning. A, no, no, because I'm up, I'm up on Saturday. I don't, I don't go to sleep on Saturday because so, okay. I can't. <laughs> okay. I just can't. I'm dead tired. I'm just hurting in pain, so I'm up. I was actually having a wonderful conversation with Oli. It was about 9, nine o'clock his time in Australia. Yeah. So it was, I don't know. Three, four I love o'clock. having those early conversations <laughs> with him. I'm sitting there. He's like, you know, what's going on? I go, oh, well, it's starting to stir here. The dog just came downstairs, so the rest of them should be getting up soon. But, um, yeah, it was good to talk to Oli on Sunday morning, Sunday evening, depending on what continent you're on. Nice, yeah. But, um, but yeah, Malcolm Reed, he came in second because yep. I'd listened to his show. His brother, Waylon, he actually came in third. Mm-hmm. But... Um, it was great. We got the we got a nice list of um, the rules, the stake rules for the SEA. Can I finish my story? <laughs> what were you? I was describing the, the steak cook-off experience. Well, go ahead. You were just about to Ugh. sell me down the river. <laughs> I, I my, did not know. My, my, did not know that. Did not know that. here in there. But, yeah, so, you know, you get a PK grill. Um, which you asked yep. me the other day, you know, what's what's so big about a PK grill? Because um, all these grills, they have different ways. You know, you, you Weber Smoky Mountain mm-hmm. or WSM, PK. Okay. You know, it's very it's, confu- it can It can be confusing to figure out what everyone's talking about. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, they, they it's a level playing field. So they supply the grills. Um, and right now they're using the PK grills, which are, it's a heavy duty. I want to say it's cast. Um They've been around for a long time, and, you know, they can just, they can produce a nice hot fire. You know, um, they provide the charcoal to you. Um, everybody gets the same charcoal. They provide the ribeyes, and they just line ribeyes up on the table. You can look, you grab, um, you grab two of them, and you can t- only turn in one. You know, but you can trim it beforehand. You can do, you know, make it look nice before the cook, but you can't do that can't after the cook. Touch it afterwards. Yep. Um, you know, you season it with whatever, and, I mean, some of these people are bringing in, you know, plastic Ziploc bags of, like, their secret recipe or oh, their yeah. compound butter that's been aging. I mean, you know, it's it's pretty so, serious. So can you cook it however you want, or are they shooting for a perfect medium has to be rare? medium. Medium? Medium. Wow. Yep. So, you know, you get points off, but they want your grill marks, so they want the nice grill marks. Right. Um, they want um, uniformity, you know. Yep. Um, and also depends on what side, you know, you want to put it in the box the way you think the judges are going to take that one bite. Because on a ribeye, you could have a bite of fat. Right. Marbleization, you know, um, or just, you know, ribeye. Um, and then, you know, you put it in a turn-in box, and the turn-in box doesn't have to be garnished. It's just got a silver, um, you know, silver, silver plate. plate. Put the steak right on top of that and turn it in. Very good experience. Nice. Very good experience. I didn't do bad. Um, two years ago, I didn't do bad. I, you know, I did pretty well for, you know, only doing it. That would be that was my second time doing it. Um, but it, it's just a fun event. Well, and that's a lot the of these guys do too. every weekend. Oh yeah, you know because it's they're more out that way. Also, you it's know, more like, down south, out west. Yep. I wish they came to this area more often. Well, I think we're going to have to start something to bring them up. We might. I mean, I think they come to Virginia. Um, Virginia, West Virginia. We can be the founding fathers of the Northeast. We can. We can. We got to look into that. We will. We'll try to. But yeah, they, um, it's really a minimal cost oh. for the state competitions because you just, you're, you're paying your entrance fee. Mm-hmm. They're supplying you They're the supplying meat. everything. They're supplying everything, cooking. And even in the world championships, I found out something very interesting. You can have a state team just like we have a competition barbecue team. Yes. You know, and there's some competition teams, you know, there's 10 guys. Oh, yeah. At the world championships, you are only allowed three people in the cooking area. 
And if so, if someone was, each person had a do- job, you literally had to, like, like a wrestling match, tag team, mm-hmm. had to tag each other out in front of a judge to remove that person and add the next person in to do their part of the process, mm-hmm. which is that I found was pretty cool. I, yeah, I, I heard that from you. <laughs> but um, like a real steak off, steak cook off is, you know, you versus you know, everybody else. Um, that may, I've never heard that, you know, on a regular cook-off, except the so World Food Championship. Just that could be for just World, world, world Food Championship. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, they're supplying it, and you're not there slow-cooking brisket. You're not there slow-cooking, you know, four separate categories. You're only cooking one steak. So you're gonna, cooking for three minutes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? You know, 30 seconds, turn. Another 30 seconds, flip. 30 seconds, turn. And that's it. Oh, yeah. Well, you only want to flip your steak once. That's what I said. You said, you, you said turn twice. Yeah, you got to get the grill marks to cross. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, therefore, you put place it on. Yes. Am I speaking any other language? Yes. Yeah, you at 11 o'clock, at you, 11 o'clock you, and at 2 o'clock. You turn it to yes. get the grill He's mark. He's flipping. Correct. He's, He's turning. turning. Then yeah. you flip yep. and you do the <laughs> other side. I got you now. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah, but they're—I mean, they're—they're they're fun events. My um, Dan, my buddy Dan from uh, Pennsylvania, he owns um, Catawissa um, Farm. Um, actually, no, Robert Robo, yeah, uh, Roarbox Farm in Catawissa, Pennsylvania. But he also owns Dan's Barbecue as well. So they held a steak cook-off, and I mean, the turnout was fantastic. Um, they had a great time, you know. And the two guys that run the actual SCA, I mean, they. They help you. They do all the work with you. You know, they make sure that the event runs smoothly. I mean, it's it's fantastic. You know, so if we ever did want to get into that and try and, you know, run one, then, you know, I'd love to, to work with them. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. Yes. You know, and you got, you know, let's just go over a couple of the rules. You know, steak may be cooked on any fire or heat source. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can only enter one entry into the steak category. Um, no. So, so steak cook off that are that's at the um, barbecue convention. They supply the grills. Steak cook offs that you just enter throughout the country. You you bring, bring your, your own, own grill. Correct. Yeah. Uh, steaks may not be marked or branded in any way. Grill marks are not considered marking. Mm-hmm. So you you know put a toothpick, a skewer of some sort to differentiate. You know, potentially, this is my, this is so and so steak that has the green skewer in it. So no other, nothing else in the box, other than that. Uh, turn in one steak, whole and uncut. Oh yeah, you can't like brand your name on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I can have you a judge, and you know it, and I stick a little toothpick in the side of it. Okay, that's his. He he gets perfect score. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, that's, that's what they that's mean. That's fixing. Fi- <laughs> yes. I'm reading you the damn okay. rules here. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Mr. N- go ahead, you do. No, I don't want to. I, I got my own read. <laughs> <laughs> uh, provide foil discs. So you place it on a foil disc. Yep. The steak. Yep. It must be placed in the box, silver side up, and not folded in any way. No sauce or garnish is allowed in the steak turn in box. Mm-hmm. A compound butter is allowed as long as it's melted. On the steak. Correct. Before turning. Yes. Uh, no size standards for seasoning on the steak, so you could actually put peppercorn, whole peppercorns on top if you want to season that way. That's mm-hmm. within the guidelines. Mm-hmm. Um, pulling in natural juices in the box is acceptable. And then reasons for disqualification, any foreign object found in the turning box String, toothpick, skewer, etc. Like you were saying, yeah. That's what, what we just yep. went through. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, ribeye steaks, other than the ones provided for the event found in the team area. So if you even have steaks hanging around, you're out. Correct. And they find it. Oh, yeah. Um, a marked steak, which obviously with the string, toothpick, skewers. Steak turned in after the turn-in window has expired. Because mm-hmm. just like a co- barbecue competition, you have turn-in times. Correct. And a folded foil disc in the box 
is disqualification because I, I'm i assuming that can be followed on the you know, mock in your box. Yep. But, uh, but yeah, listen to the guys. They absolutely love it. Uh, we have a comment, Jeremy Lucino. SCA comes with a restaurant depot membership, too. Major perk. Ooh. I didn't know that. That, that is, is a major. Did, yeah. That is okay. a major perk. Uh-huh. Very good to know. You know. So it might be just worth signing up. <laughs> Jeremy's local, too. We're going to have, might have to get something together with all the locals. Yeah. Put a little something together. Pit that life, cool. night I, I, out. I think I might, yeah, might have the place. <laughs> <laughs> I think we do. Yeah. Um, you want to do your read real quick here? Sure. Sure. If you want to hear this episode again, or any of our old episodes, and you want to share them with a friend who might be interested, simply send them to the United Podcast Network TV. That's United Podcast Network TV. You can find this podcast in the vodcast. That's video on demand in case they want to watch it. Find this excuse me. Find this episode and all previous episodes on United Podcast Network TV. Please subscribe and share. Nice. I think I'm gonna have to go get a steak now. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> You, uh, Katie just has an answer. She just has an answer. Yeah. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> well, that's it for this week. Yeah. Uh, we'd like to thank you all. Um, we'd also like to tell you, you know, thank you, uh, Bobby and Jack's Memphis Barbecue, as always, for helping us out. Please go support them if you're in, in the New England area. They are located at 1777 Main Street in Tewksbury, Mass., right on Route 38. Uh, good things coming to keep everything keep improving. Definitely. I'm yep. getting wonderful feedback from the people. Uh, when you go in there, tell them you heard about them from Pit, Pit Life, Life Barbecue. Barbecue. That'll be great. We'd appreciate that. Yep. Um, and then and grab know, a messy Mike barbecue sauce while you're there too. There you go. Support support everyone who's helping us. Yep. Support local. Bring this to you every week. Um, once again. Uh, Pit Life Barbecue Podcast at gmail.com for questions and comments. Pit Life Barbecue Podcast on Facebook, in, uh, Instagram, all social media aspects. And uh, find us on iTunes. Hit subscribe, like, rate, and review. Five stars would be great. And more importantly, sh- uh, hit that share button. Send it around. Know anybody who is interested? Easy. Hit the share button. Hey, check this out. I think you'll like it. We keep growing slowly but surely, and uh, we appreciate it. So, until next week. Bye. Have a good day. Keep the smoke rolling. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.